Good afternoon, everybody. Perfect. Don't. <laughs> Boy, that quieted the room, didn't it? I'll wait a few seconds while you all have a seat. Well, it's March tomorrow, so I thought I would appropriately dress for St. Patrick's Day. Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see you all here today. Um, council members, Festerson, Pauls, Gray, Harding, Councilwoman Melton, thank you so much for, for being here today. Guests and citizens of Omaha, thank you for being here. It's a special honor to present the annual State of the City Address today. Pre preparing for this day makes us look inward. It makes us evaluate our goals and consider the next steps to make our city even better in the future. We weigh the confidence and optimism of our citizens, and we evaluate the many ways that our city grows and prospers outside the services the city government provides. This comprehensive review leads me to report that our city is confident, growing, focused, and engaged. Omaha is financially strong. Development is at a pace never seen before. Our citizens consistently work together to improve their neighborhoods and our city. Our private sector and our public institutions gen are generally healthy, expanding, and successful. All of this is happening primarily because of one important word, and that's investment. The investments I refer to are public taxpayer investments. They are also investments made by local businesses to grow and hire more employees, and by our nonprofit partners, schools, and healthcare facilities that teach and train and care for others. They are also investments of time, volunteers, who help others in countless ways. For these reasons and more, Omaha is a thriving city with an exciting future. We can clearly demonstrate that investments in critical public objectives do pay off. One of the best examples of this is public safety. In the last seven years, we have devoted substantial resources to support our police and our fire departments. In 2013, Chief Schmatter and I made a commitment to a fully staffed, equipped, and trained police department. We have now reached our staffing goal of 902 police officers, a record number, and an increase of 100 new officer positions. We have improved recruiting and training. We have adjusted staff responsibilities and purchased new equipment to help our officers do their jobs better and more safely and with more accountability. So has this investment paid off? And I believe the answer is clearly yes. Omaha is as safe today as it has been in many, many years. Our clearance rate, or our success rate at which we solve violent crimes is nearly double that of cities of equal size. Over the last four years, our homicide rate has fallen to a 30-year low. Citizen complaints against police officers are down, and incidents of force are down, making Omaha a regional leader with a low number of officer-involved incidences with a firearm. Police response times have improved, in part due to the West Precinct that we just opened in September. And this fall, we will break ground on a new fire station near 34th and Hugh Street in South Omaha. This will be the first new fire station that we have built in 20 years, and it will replace the 100-year-old station, Station 31, that is at 25th and L Street in South Omaha. We are pleased with our progress on public safety, but we are not content. The citizens of Omaha believe that public safety is our primary responsibility, and therefore it's our top, top priority too. All of us continue to aggress it with a healthy sense of urgency. It is also urgent that we act to improve and maintain the condition of our roads, and everyone knows what I'm talking about here. The safety and efficiency of our roads is a top priority for me and for our taxpayers. Improved transportation also meets my commitment to improve the taxpayer experience. My job as mayor is to identify and study issues that need to be resolved, and then to present reasonable solutions to those issues. 
Earlier this month, I proposed and the City Council approved a $200 million bond issue that will appear on the May 12th primary ballot. If approved by the voters, we will fund the City's first pavement maintenance program. Since I have been mayor, we have resurfaced more than 750 lane miles of roads. That's the distance between Omaha and Waco, Texas. But it's not good enough, and we must do more. For over 50 years now, previous administrations and city councils have not funded road infrastructure program worthy of a modern and first class city that we have become. And we cannot afford to wait any longer. Spending millions of dollars every year to patch potholes will set us back even further. Last July, we started a series of public meetings and presented a road map to better streets. We studied our road infrastructure, what is needed to make long-term sustainable improvements and options to pay for it. After an analysis, public meetings, and listening to our taxpayers, I am convinced that this is the right move to make. I don't take lightly the decision that we have placed before the vote voters, especially after implementing, uh, implementing two property tax rate reductions since I have been mayor. Keeping our taxes as low as possible is very important to me, and I know it's important to the city council too. But so is providing the services that the taxpayers expect and deserve. We anticipate that the approved ballot measures will result in a levy increase of approximately $26 a year for the owner of a $100,000 home. An aggressive pavement maintenance program where the public will see immediate and significant improvement is best funded by property taxes. The new work will address only our existing roads, the ones that we drive on every day today. With this level of funding, we can double the amount spent each year on road resurfacing. Every lane mile in Omaha can be resurfaced once every 20 years, which is the average lifespan of a road. And importantly, the plan will include additional funding for unimproved streets that exist in some of our older Omaha neighborhoods. As a matter of principle, I believe the public should vote on large and expensive projects and facilities when taxes will change or a new financial risk would be assumed. In the coming weeks, we will schedule another series of town hall meetings to answer your questions and explain how this investment will further connect our city to the potential that is now before us. It is important that the voters make this decision. If you say yes, we can start work this summer. Building great partnerships is the way we get things done in Omaha. Nearly everything we accomplish benefits from the leadership the financial support, and the vision of our valued partners. In 2020, we will see great collaboration in North and South Omaha to transform a once declining neighborhood <clears throat> and offer new, better quality of life. We are fortunate to have received not one, but two choice neighborhood grants. These awards from the Department of Housing and Urban Development are a testament to our strength of our partnership and our record of successful outcomes in Omaha. With a $25 million implementation grant, we will continue the revival of the important North 30th Street corridor from Cummings to Pinckney. We will replace 70-year-old Spencer Street homes with modern, affordable housing. Residents will have opportunities for employment, better income, access to quality education, and health care. The new neighborhood will be named Kennedy Square. This investment will expand the progress already underway at the successful Highlander development. Six miles south, a similar project is beginning. Omaha is one of four cities to receive a Choice Neighborhood Planning and Action Grant to revitalize Indian Hills neighborhood, including OHA Southside Terrace Garden Apartments. We will use our experience <clears throat> and our resources to make housing safer, families stronger, and opportunities equal for the diverse population of this neighborhood. Omaha has the will and the commitment and the resources to invest these choice grants wisely and become an example of other communities ready to invest in older neighborhoods. 
Please help me recognize all of our partners, and could you all please stand when I call your name? First of all, Omaha Housing Authority Executive Director Joni Poor and her team. The OHA Board of Directors. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big board. Kristen Williams with the Sherwood Foundation. <clears throat> 75 North Executive Director Othello Meadows and his team. <clears throat> Way back there. Cesar Garcia, Executive Director of the Southside Redevelopment Corporation. <clears throat> and our Planning Director, Dave Fanslaw and his staff. <clears throat> We are up for this job. We also now have citizen-led North and South 24th Street business improvement districts. The BIDs empower citizens to preserve and enhance their communities by developing projects and services that address the needs of their districts. The best ideas and plans often come from all of us working together. Omaha is also benefiting from exciting and unprecedented private investment. The Omaha World Herald recently referred to Omaha as a boom town. And who doesn't love to hear that? Many developments in progress reflect the significant ways our city benefits from private investment. The Hartwood Preserve Project in West Omaha is a 500-acre housing, office, retail, and entertainment project near Boys Town. When fully complete, it will include over 2,000 new housing units with a project value of over $1 billion. The Millwork Common Project in North Downtown is transforming an old industrial area into unique commercial uses. This $300 million project is a great example of how both growth and preservation can benefit our city. Also underway, the Builders District, the final phase of the Capital District, new projects in Benson and Blackstone, and the ConAgra campus. When faced with the challenge at ConAgra a few years ago, we did what Nebraskans do best. We created opportunity. Just this week, we broke ground on the $500 million development featuring retail, residential, a new hotel, beautiful green space, and a plaza connecting to the old market. This exciting project fits well with the mission of the 1,300 ConAgra employees who still live and work in Omaha. And very soon, we will make another announcement to expand Omaha's development momentum, so sit, stay tuned for that one. We always like to see new constructions and new headquarters appearing, but the real value of private investment in our city is the positive effect it has on small businesses, in jobs, in wage growth, in attracting and retaining young professionals. The ripple effect of private investment in a strong local economy benefit everyone. Here are a few examples. Employment growth is up over 3% compared to one year ago. The unemployment rate in Omaha remains at 2.8%. The average hourly wages have risen by over $1 since December of 2018. In 2019, the Omaha area was home to 48 new tech startups. And in 2019, the city issued over 20,000 building permits. The construction value of these permits is over $1 billion. And that is one of the highest amounts on record and the highest since I've been there. Business growth is vital for our future. In September of 2015, Carmen Tapio opened North End Teleservices, a locally owned business on North 24th Street that provides call center services to many sectors, including medical, financial, educational, and the United States government. She started with seven employees. Today, she has 120 full-time employees. 2020 will be a year for tremendous growth for her company. Carmen plans to increase her staff to 300 by late summer, tripling her workforce in three years. 
The starting hourly wages at North End Teleservices is $17.25 an hour, and that's increasing too, to $19 an hour. She plans to expand her facility in North Omaha and open another center in South Omaha. Carmen Tapio is running the largest African-American female-owned business in the state of Nebraska. She offers good jobs, good wages, and opportunities for advancement. She has the only supervisor apprentice program in the entire state. She also offers tuition assistance for her employees and their families and even offers transportation to and from work for her employees. When a company like North End Teleservices succeeds, our city succeeds. Carmen, could you please stand? <laughs> Carmen, thank you for investing in the people and building your business in Omaha. We appreciate what you do. To advance job training and employment opportunities, the city supports many programs. A year ago this month, with our partner, the Salvation Army, we selected the first participants for our Way to Work program. A Way to Work is a work readiness program that provides employment, training, and services to persons that are homeless. We offer jobs in our parks department, good wages, tools for long-term success, and additional resources the Salvation Army is trained to provide. In our first 12 months, we have assisted 38 men and women who are experiencing homelessness. 13 of them have found employment, and 14 have found housing. I am proud to recognize everyone who has successfully completed this program, and I'd like to introduce Bradley. Would you stand? <clears throat> Bradley lived at the Sienna Francis house for over a year. After beginning our program, he went to jail on a warrant and he served two months. On the day he was released, he called the Salvation Army and he asked to return. He successfully completed the program and trained at Metro Community College. Bradley is now employed by Drake Williams Steele, and he earns nearly double the minimum wage, and he has moved into his own apartment. Bradley, congratulations. <laughs> we wish you continued success. And thank you to the Salvation Army Major Greg Thompson for your support, Program Director or Coordinator Marianne Slack, um, and the Salvation Army team, and also our Parks Director, Brooke Bench, and his staff. Could you all please stand? <clears throat> our first year results show that we can succeed, so I am going to be asking the City Council to support additional funding in 2021 to expand the program, help more people like Bradley earn a trade, earn a good wage, and live in safe, affordable housing. A Way to Work expands our commitment to workforce development, including Heartland Workforce Solution and the Empowerment Network Step Up Jobs Program for teens and young adults. Today, I am very pleased to announce that we will make a new investment in an internship program for Latino students. A pilot program launched last year by the Latino Center of the Midlands has demonstrated early and impressive results. With support and funding from committed community partners, the program will expand this year to offer jobs, training, and mentoring to youth ages 16 through 19 years old. I will soon ask the City Council to approve an initial $25,000 for this program, joining partners including the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce, Heartland Workforce Solutions, Avenue One Scholars Foundation, Hawkins Construction, and Metro Community College. We have a history of supporting workforce training programs with established goals and partnerships. The Latino Center has provided services in Omaha for 50 years and has a measurable record of performance and success. The program meets or exceeds our funding requirements and will fill a much needed void. In addition to public and private investments, Omaha's dynamic philanthropic community plays a critical role in making our city one of opportunity and enjoyment. The generosity is extraordinary, and throughout Omaha, we see signs of this commitment. 
One example, Heritage Services and the city work together to build the Siena Francis House Shelter for those who are experiencing homelessness. Donors provided an impressive $18 million for the shelter. The city paid for infrastructure costs, including demolition of the former day service center and cleanup of the property. We cut the ribbon in December, and now 450 people can find shelter and receive services in a safe, respectful, and friendly environment. Our goal must be to end homelessness. Anything short of that is unacceptable. Work is well underway for the transformation of our riverfront with new parks, green space, entertainment, and recreation areas. This is one of the most significant projects in Omaha's history. This $300 million project, which is 80% funded by private donations, will forever change our city. And let me update you on many city initiatives that will impact citizens in the near future. In January 2021, our new solid waste recycling and yard waste collection contract will take effect. Step one, we awarded the contract to FCC Environmental Services. Step two, preparation for implementation is underway. FCC has ordered the automated trucks and covered carts and is in employment discussion with those who are currently working for our current contractor waste management. Step three is implementation, and we will hold FCC to a high standard of service. This change in contractors and an entirely new collection process is a significant undertaking. I really appreciate the council's support of our thorough preparation for this change. We did environmental studies, professional evaluations, a pilot program, community meetings, and public testimony that led to the current contract that we have. This will be a big change for all of us, but we will be ready for a successful transition on day one. We are also implementing our new landlord registry and rental inspection program. Landlord registration started last month and will continue throughout the coming months. We have an estimated 80,000 rental units in the city of Omaha, and we have received approximately 23,000 registrations so far. The registration deadline is March, the end of March. Rental property inspections begin in 2022. We will be fully staffed to carry out the requirements of the ordinance. The first ever program for Omaha will benefit renters, especially the most vulnerable, while not being overly burdensome to the landlords. And we look forward to its full implementation. My recommendation to hire Omaha's first Vision Zero coordinator is now before the city council. Our active living advisory recommended that we consider a vision zero strategy to reduce and eliminate traffic deaths. I formed a task force and they made a recommendation to become a vision zero city and demonstrate our commitment by hiring a vision zero coordinator. And we are ready to do that. In 2019, the Omaha police investigated 36 fatal and 177 serious injuries in Omaha. We must change those numbers. I will also bring an ordinance to the council this spring to regulate scooters. The evaluation of our 2019 pilot will be completed soon. An ordinance that clearly sets the rules for safe use of our scooters will be necessary if we decide that scooters will be allowed in Omaha. Transit is part of every discussion every day. Public safety, job growth, workforce training and development, all require a safe and future-oriented transportation system. Metro Transit's orbit will begin this fall featuring 60-foot accordion-style buses. Orbit's initial route will make stops between West Roads Mall and downtown, offering bus tracking technology for the riders and greater efficiency and convenience for all who use it. And I can't wait to take my first orbit ride. We are studying other transit options across Omaha with many partners. This spring, Metro Smart Cities will announce its first pilots to test potential options for greater multi-mobility access. One of the first projects will be a pair of bikeways on streets with high bicycle ridership. We will install and evaluate temporary protected bike lanes for up to 18 months. 
Smart Cities is the city-led initiative using technology and innovation to improve transit. Forever North is a housing and multimodal transportation study for North 24th Street. The focus is on development, housing, transit and con connectivity, art, history and culture, and of course, most importantly, people. This is a plan developed by citizens for citizens. The draft of Forever North strategy will be available on the city's planning department website Monday. This spring, we will introduce a new City of Omaha mobile app to make city government more accessible. Taxpayers are our customers, and this is another way to improve the taxpayer experience. The app will offer many features. You can make a report to the mayor's hotline. You'll be able to access all city websites and review job openings. You'll have information about trash collection, road closing, snow removal, all of it will be on the app. And there will be also a social media hub and much more. Another reason that we are optimistic about the future of Omaha is more and more young people are assuming positions of leadership. In business, the arts, philanthropy, community organizations, and elected office, young people are rising to the challenge of making Omaha better. Every day, our city is getting more exciting, diverse, and rewarding for young people and young families. Recently, the popular online technology company, ZDNet, ranked Omaha number two on the list of the fastest growing hotspots for tech professionals. Tech professionals. This project, or pros, progress will continue, I believe, due to the work of educators and industry recruiters and business incubators and partners like the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce, but most importantly, because of the outreach of young leaders themselves to their peers. Finally, I would like to express my appreciation to an institution in Omaha that is taking on important life-saving work. At this moment, the highly trained experts at the Nebraska Medical Center are continuing to respond to the nation's call for help with the coronavirus outbreak. The Medical Center is an extraordinary institution, and the leadership has worked hard for years to prepare itself with the expertise and the facilities to handle just this kind of threat. The Medical Center's response, willingness to help, and public health mission perfectly reflect how an organized, civilized society takes care of each other in times of need. To the Nebraska Medical Center and its leadership and its talented doctors and nurses, thank you. Omaha has certainly evolved over time from a small riverside town to the diversified economic leader that it is today. Our ability to affect change, to embrace it, to improve it is remarkable. Our citizens are leaders in making the public, private, and nonprofit individual investment that is driving this change. Together, our continued investment in Omaha will result in a stronger and a brighter and a more vibrant future. Thank you to everyone in Omaha for what you do for our city and also for what you do for each other. Thank you all.